what I'm going to talk about that the journey which I have traveled during the last two decades, how we can change the lives of people while still doing our job. There are millions of people around the world who doesn't have two square of meals to eat. In the light of this background, the title of my talk is Changing the Lives of People Through Seaweeds Cultivation and Utilization, a new initiative which I have started in India. As you know that we have we are going to have 10.5 billion people. If you see what are the current problems and the future nutritional security, climate change, health, energy, clean water. These are some of the challenges which we are going to face in the coming few years. What's the problem? Please, can anybody stop that? OK, we have our Planning Commission report in India where we say 32 rupees and 26 rupees for the urban as well as the rural area. We have 18% of the world's population, but we have only 4% of fresh water resources. We have a relatively youth population, and we need to find employment opportunity for 71 million people in the next five to 10 years. HIV is another major problem. Despite of the green devolution, India has still facing a lot of problem in terms of malnutrition. India has 35% of the world's malnourished children, and nearly one-third of the India's people go hungry. About 26% of India's population are considered to be food insecure, consuming less than 80% of the minimum energy requirements. So it costs the nation quite a lot in terms of productivity. So we need new ideas. Ideas that can work for today's and tomorrow. We need a new paradigm shift in our thinking process. We need new technology to work. So we need to move from not only from the job security to food security to nutritional security to environmental security. And this will only change the lives of the people. And how does it work? We are all looking for new technology. A technology can be only successful if we have this 4A like the four legs of a table. It should be available, it should be affordable, it should be accessible, and it has to be appropriate. If any one of the A is missing of these, out of these, then it's not going to work. So how do we do that? I'm working in a concept of how do we utilize the marine resources. Absolutely, there is no difference between the sea and the land. If you hypothetically remove all the water from the sea, throw it outside the world, you will find we have all the things, whatever is available in the land. These are the beautiful sea plants which grow under the sea. This is basically the sea grapes, and you have the kelps and everything. And these seaweeds are being used as a source of food, feed, fodder, fertilizer, medicine, cosmetics, the day-to-day -day cosmetics, all these things you are getting from these seaweeds. And if you see in terms of its nutritional value, 100 grams of these seaweeds is equivalent to almost one kilogram of the sea vegetables. When a baby is born in the oriental countries, the first food which the baby gets and the mother gets is from the sea plants. You can see this, these are the chlorella noodles. You go to the market, you get these chlorella noodles out of, these are the beautiful food which you get out of these sea plants. This is how it grows and then you can make the roadside pakora. This is very delicious and very healthy. Starting from toothpaste to the ice cream, whatever we use day-to-day -day life, this is all coming out of these sea plants. These are the various products of these sea plants. You can eat this. This is sushi, which is a multi-billion dollar industry. 10% of the Japanese diet, it comes from these seaweeds. And these are the various products which comes out of these seaweeds. And also, it is having a lot of anti-HIV activities. This particular one particular species is more than $2 billion industry now. And this is a typical sushi, which is very common. And this is having an anti-cholesterol activities. Remember, the tallest plant in the whole kingdom belongs to seaweed, which is, can grow up to 70 meters in height. 
And in India, we have more than 7,000 kilometers of the sea coast, but still the people in the coastal area live in a very, very miserable condition. What we have done over a period of time, out of 770 species which is available in Indian coast, we have identified four different species of this and then developed a model. This is how we can go for the sea farming. This is a story of Chilika Lake, which you can see. You can read about that more story in a book called I Have a Dream. We identified this miracle plant growing in the uh, Chilika Lake, and this is also growing in other parts of the country. And we started giving the training, knowing that the people have not much money in this coastal area. So we created a new model. I am not a management fellow, but we tried to create a new model. And this model is working very, very successfully. How do we convert these abundant aquaculture ponds into a new source of income, a new source of livelihood? All of you know that next to agriculture, it is aquaculture which provides the highest number of employment in the country. But because of the conversion of this paddy field into the aquaculture ponds, these ponds were lying idle. And through very, very small eco-friendly technology, we have converted these ponds. And this is, this is a very simple technique. India is a tropical country where you can consume, a, save a lot of energy by doing this sun drying. And this is a typical story. This is a self-help group where we have trained a large number of uh, village people of the sea farming area. These are some women, for the first time, they have earned their own money in a small coastal area. And this is how a field looks like. You don't need to put any fresh water. You don't need to put any fertilizer out of this. And then you can farm the ocean. I don't have a phone here, sorry. Um, and you can see this is a typical view in the southern part of the country, in southern India. We have started training the people in different languages, whether it's Tamil, Telugu, Malayalam, uh, Marathi, Bengali, these are the different manuals we have created. And we have an inbuilt program which we put into this and then form a UNFCC. Under UNFCC, we formed an Asian network for using algae as a carbon dioxide sink because acidification of ocean is one of the biggest challenge. Now, what we are trying to do is not only create more employment in the areas, but try to take out the extra carbon dioxide to combat the global warming which is happening. And the second thing is that all of you know that the ocean remove the extra carbon dioxide from the sea. This is what we did in Andhra, and you can see this is about I have a dream. Uh, <clears throat> this is a small thing which I have developed, tried to think out of box and file to the next stage. So uh, we are making it much, much smaller, not fixing it on the top of the car, but we are developing with more international collaboration with this. How do we combat uh, global warming and then develop different products out of this. This is how, when you run a car, you can take your carbon dioxide from the exhaust and then process it, you can put this diesel which comes out and run this car. So this is a small innovation we have tried. And uh, of course, due to lack of time, I'll not be able to show the other videos. There was another five there was another five minutes uh, video about that, how we actually uh, farm the sea in very, very difficult uh, situation. And this has changed the lives of people in the coastal areas. You go to Tamil Nadu, you go to Andhra, you go to Kerala. Uh, we train the people across the country. And these women are now getting 10 to 15,000 rupees per day. And there are 10,000 people. Uh, who are uh, working in this area. And that has created a cascading effect. It's not that particular only growing these weeds. It has a lot of multiple benefits uh, which are interlinked into this. So one of the biggest challenges for us uh, as scientists, we try to do a lot of things within the lab. We don't move out to the public sphere. And 
it's, it's a very challenging job because I am not a management fellow, but it's, it was very difficult to speak to the banks, to speak to the NGOs, to speak to the government initially. Nobody wanted to buy this idea, but when we saw the light of the day, then more and more people came and joined us in this particular mission. And we are now expanding it in a bigger way. Now, my next challenge is in the Northeast, you have a lot of bio biological resources here. You have cherry blossoms here. It's quite beautiful. You have a large variety of orchids. You have probably the large varieties of pineapples. You have large varieties of citrus over here. But when it comes to utilize these bioresources, there are bigger challenges. We have all the things over here, but how do we make it a more successful program that cannot be done by the individual, where we need to integrate the people from the management, but how do we make it a more successful program that cannot be done by the individual, where we need to integrate the people from the management, administration, scientists, NGOs, and other things. So this was a small initiative which we started in the sea and it has expanded. Thank you very much.